I wake up to the sound of my cell phone. My daughter's name glowing on the screen. 3.10am. Mum, my belly won't stop hurting. I respond immediately. Oh, baby, it's been almost a week now. Please go to the emergencies. Don't wait till Tuesday. Do you think I should? Yes. This has been going on for too long. And it's a long weekend. Just go, okay? I try to call her, but she doesn't answer. Texting instead. Still in dorm, can't talk. I reply. Okay, just get an Uber and go to the hospital. Don't worry about insurance. It's all covered. I didn't know if that was true, of course, but I didn't need her to know that. My daughter, Melanie, had left home and moved to a big city five hours away from our small hometown last fall for school. We have no friends or family in that city, and I was very reluctant for her to move, but she insisted, probably for that very reason. It's the first time she's been away from home. Typical for many single parents, I am perhaps overprotective of her and her younger brother, Ben, trying to make up for the other parents' lack of enthusiasm for parenting duties, and she never had to deal with any hardship or illness by herself before. But my insistence for her to go to the emergencies wasn't about being overprotective. She had been complaining about this for several days now, and she is usually an active, healthy girl. I barely hear from her during the week, often having to call and text several times before I get an answer about how busy she is. With this level of repeated texting, I knew something was going on. I wait in the dark. Three thirty-five a.m. Mum, just got to the hospital. Are you sure it's open? No one is here. Okay, find emergency. It has to be open. She replies. Ah, this place is so creepy. It's just a hospital, baby. Did you find the reception for emergency? 4.05 a.m. Mum, I swear I've been walking around these corridors for hours. There's no one here, and my belly hurts. I'm going to go back to dorm and try to get some sleep. I tried calling, but she wouldn't answer. Baby, answer your phone, please. Find the emergency. Then her response flashed on my cell phone. No one is here, except dead people. The maternal anxiety gnawing my insides instantly burst into flames, replaced by a sharp sense of dread and terror as I had never experienced in my life. I jumped out of bed and began changing frantically into my outdoor clothes. Never mind that I had to be at work in a few hours, or Ben was still in bed and would need breakfast before being sent to school. I knew I had to get to that hospital as soon as I could. 4.25am On my way, Melanie. I'm just leaving home right now. Be there by 10. Can you call a friend to come and get you? No answer. I called as I drove out towards the highway. Again, no answer. 5am. Her text flashes on the car screen. Don't come here, Mum, please. Ben still needs you. I love you. I barked her name at the hands-free, desperately trying to call her as I punched the hospital's location into the GPS but she never answered. 
tears streaming down my face. Accelerating through the highway, I called 911, gasping that my daughter is in danger at the general hospital, hundreds of miles away. I barely escaped crashing into oncoming cars as headlights rushed towards me in the dark, honking furiously away in the night. I tried calling a few more times during the drive, but I gave up. Eventually, I swerved into the parking lot of the hospital. I'll never know how I made it there alive. 10.17am Baby, I'm here at the hospital. Are you here? No response. The hospital looks normal under the morning sun. A steady stream of visitors and patients flowing in and out. Ambulances dotted here and there. I think about trying to go in and see if they have a record of her, but realise it would probably be pointless, as they wouldn't share anything with me. Some instinct tells me to leave the hospital and go to her dorm. As I pulled up, I spotted her coming down the steps. She looked lovely, glowing with health and youthfulness, her thick chestnut hair gleaming in the sunshine. I cried out, leapt out of the car, and rushed towards her, hugging her so hard I feared her bones would break. Mum, what the hell? What are you doing here? She pulled away, surprise and confusion filling her dark eyes, completely eclipsing any pleasure she may have had on seeing me. Your stomach ache? I thought you were at the hospital. I babbled my confusion also growing. What? That was just pre-period cramps. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you to drive here. I got my period last night. Why on earth would you think I'm at the hospital? The dark confusion grew. I explained about the texts, pulling out my phone to show her, but there was nothing there. I tried to remember if I deleted her text, but I can't. I don't want to ask her to show her text to me, and she doesn't offer to. The world crashed down around me. Confusion gave way to suspicion in Melanie's vibrant face. I have a class, Mum. I've got to go. I don't know what the texts were. I'm sorry. Are you driving back? I can't remember what I mumbled in response. Some friends were calling for her impatiently, and she ran off. I'm sitting alone in a motel room in the city. The nice police officer just left me, saying he won't be pressing charges for wasting police resources this time. I'm sitting at my laptop, typing this out hoping the writing exercise will give me clarity on what the hell happened. I can't fall asleep. I lie back, staring at the ceiling. Soon, I realise that I'm just waiting. Three, twenty-one. A.M. Mum, my stomach is hurting so much. What should I do? Hello, sinister listeners. If you've enjoyed this story, then you'll find all the author's information in the description below. For more content, be sure to like comment, and subscribe to succumb to the sinister.